Hello, and welcome to the Preferred Contractors Podcast, where we give you actionable steps to grow your contracting business. I'm your host here, Jordan Harrison. So today in this episode, we're going to talk about how we can really add value to your business through the right systems and processes centered around your customers' needs. And I know uh, contractors all the time, and, and really any business owner here is a lot of times like, you need to add value, you need to add value, but they don't quite understand what that means. So we have a couple here today uh, that's going to join us and talk about their experiences in the contracting space uh, in their business. This led to a ton of growth. Uh, by having those transparent systems in place, educating their customers the right way, and of course, keeping their best interest in mind. So I'm excited to have Emily and Frank Monzo of Monzo's Home Repair with us today. Emily and Frank, welcome, guys. Hey, thank, thank you, you for having us. Thank you for us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, I, I want to hear about you guys first. And I think I love having guests on that, that own that actually are owning the business, not necessarily the, always the, the sales trainers or thing like that, but people that are in the weeds that are constantly growing, especially organically the way you guys are. So um, this is going to be a fun episode. So tell us a little bit more about your journeys uh, as you guys have built out Monzo's Home Repair. Well, Jordan, I've, I've been in this business for 25 years. Uh, I've worked for many different contractors in different trades. Uh, I've seen ups and downs. I've, I've definitely learned the what not to do's. Um, but throughout my journey, I realized that, you know, the business can change for the better. You know, everybody's a cut and dry, you know, like the one thing that was consistent in every company is get in, get out, cut corners and raise your profits. It's very simple, you know, and, and to me, it's, it's disgusting. You know, that's where the transparency, I believe, is, is adding value and, and, and putting the customer first. I mean, let's face it, we're in the service industry, we need to provide service the proper way. So that's what led us to Mondo's Home Repair. So we can, we can, we can show a better quality of a tradesman or a craftsman. Um, yeah. Well, so um, when I met Frankie, he had already been in and around the industry. Um, my background's more of business development. Um, I've worked in several different fields, providing offices, input um, into how to grow their business. Um, and a lot of it's really um simple things that you would think as a business owner, oh, people just know this, but they really don't. So um, we even looked at wording on contracts. Like, are we being transparent with our expectations of the customer? And then therefore putting the customer at ease because people like to know what to expect. Um, so we created a system um, from the ground up, which goes right from the initial contact, contact all the way till after um, more in their home to make sure that, you know, we're checking off all the boxes of um, our system. Yeah. And that's so important. People don't think about, you know, the buyer's journey, like what happens before. Uh, and then even the client journey, like in the client journey doesn't stop uh, as, as you guys have noted, it doesn't stop at the end. It doesn't stop at, at the finished job and taking payment. It's the review, it's the referrals, which I know we're going to dive into today uh, with y'all, but uh, no, and that's a huge point. People don't think, front to end. And like, Frank, like you said, it's a lot of these contractors come in to cut the corners, get in, get out. And that's, that's the way they do their business. And um, no, and I, I wholeheartedly agree with y'all. And there, there needs to be more contracting businesses out there that are they're just like what you guys are doing. So cool. Well, let's, let's get into the growth part. Let's get into what you guys have done. So I wanted to talk about what you've done over the past uh, couple of years in terms of kind of breaking down what's made you guys successful. So what's the one thing that's, let's start with like, what's making you guys different uh, than your competitors? So one of the things we noticed, uh, well, actually, let me rewind. One of the things I noticed as a homeowner from that perspective, because it's important to put yourself in your shoes uh, in the shoes of your customer rather. Um, so I called around, right? And I didn't, I didn't get anybody on the phone. I got no live people. And then when I did, sometimes they'd call back, you know, a week later, um, I would talk to an office person. They didn't really, they weren't able to talk me through what was going on. So um, the first and foremost is we are very responsive to calls and texts. Um, our customers can reach us on an office line. The office will text us the customer's information, what they're looking for. And then um, we'll let the customer know, hey, we're at a job, we're gonna give you a call or we'll give them a, that brief introduction. Um, during that initial call, one thing that we make sure to do is to answer the three basic questions that every human wants answered. Um, who are you? Why should I care? And do you care about me? So we go through, you know, um, 
you know, hey, Jordan, I, I know you got a, a baseboard issue. You know, we'll talk about it. I'll ask you a bunch of questions. Um, I'll make sure that um, I'm pricing according to um, expectations. So, um, you know, actually, I'm going to switch that over to, let's say, a wall repair. Because people will say, oh, okay, how big is a wall repair? Well, is there a texture there? What kind of paint? You know, so there's a lot of, and Frank will go into that more, but there's a lot of questions to be answered so that we make sure we're timing it right and the, the customer doesn't get sticker shock. Well, during that call, I'm also going to go, hey, look, I know you're calling around, you're trying to get some prices. Just so you know, we're a family owned and operated business. And I'll go through my little spiel about us and I'll, I'll offer for them to look at our reviews, to check out our social media so you can see some of the work we've done, befores and afters. Um, and so that kind of puts people at ease because now you're building that trust. Um, and then from there, and I'm sorry, I'm going to let you talk in a second because <laughs> I'm very passionate about this. I love that we um, are very transparent with our customers. Um, so when our guys go or when we go, we make sure um, that we're handing them a business card, that we're introducing ourselves, that we're talking the customer through, here's what we're going to be doing. So there's no um, surprises, there's no shocks. And then there's also no sticker shock because we've been in communication with the customer. So we know what we're expecting so we can price it accordingly. Now, sometimes we'll give them a range. If they're not really sure, they don't know how to answer the questions, the photos are kind of hard to tell. Um, and so that's just the basic into the appointment. So as I can, as you can see, there's, there's quite a bit of thought process that's gone into how we interact with our customers. Well, and honestly, and, and Frank, I'm going to hear from you in a second, like the differentiating factors affect you even answer the phone. Um, to me, we, I can't tell me time. Matter of fact, Jay, Jay Miller's CEO of Kyber Digital, he's, um, you know, kind of over this podcast, we were having that conversation the other day where uh, how many contractors lose out on jobs because they just don't simply answer the phone. Uh, and to top that, I called 15 people to come out and landscape my yard or just cut the grass, or whatever. Uh, out of those 15, three answered the phone the first time. One of them actually followed up with a decent quote and the expectation of what it was. And guess who won my job? Um, and it's that easy to answer the phone, right? Um, and Frank, go on, man. I'm sorry. I don't mean to. No, to, no, to you off. no. I think, no, I think this is fantastic. So I'm loving it. Go. Uh, I'm going to backtrack because she was, you know, my wife is on the right path, but the most, here comes the value, the, the why people come, like choose us. So let's go with the, the baseboard issue. So someone notices there's something wrong with the baseboard. Someone calls and says, hey, uh, I need my baseboard fixed. No problem. Other companies, and I'm sure, you know, you've probably had it done to you. They come out, they fix the baseboard, and they leave. Or here comes the devalue. So they come in and they say, yeah, it's a, it's a baseboard, uh, $150, we'll fix it for you, no problem. Then they get there and then they change it. Oh, well, you know, it needs this and there's a leak and this and that. So to, to take away value, you're, or the customers are like, well, you said this. They're already expecting it to be 150. So by going and, and, and saying, like, even on the phone, well, your baseboards, there's, a, there's stains on it. I mean, for us, it's easy. There's a leak in the wall somewhere, a pipe, a crack in the stucco, something's letting water come in, something from the foundation, no matter what. There's, water comes from somewhere. So with the customer already expecting that there could be an issue, maybe not, you know, it's like they say, uh, prepare for, what, prepare for the worst, prepare for the worst hope for but the hope best. for the best. Yeah. In other words, I, I, my customers, I don't leave them like, oh my God, what, what's going to happen? So we say, look, this is what the, the worst case scenario is. We, there, there might be a pipe leak. We have to find it. So this is the price or this is the price. And then when I get there, it's not like automatically, oh, we got to rip your wall out and do new plumbing. I show them. I'll say, come here, let's look at this together, right? Mm -hmm. How many times we, we go, we walk it like, like a troubleshooter should do. You don't start at the top. You start at the bottom. You work your way up. So, okay, we found many times that people's baseboard, we'll go with that theory, mm -hmm. uh, was a, a window that was open this much. Mm -hmm. There was no fix. It shut the window. Now, of course, you know, you explain to the customer, we have to fix the paint in the baseboard, but you need to make sure your window's shut. Or one time we had a leak coming from under the ground. One of the, uh, the pipes burst under the kitchen and we didn't know where this water was. They had plumber after plumber, uh, handyman after handyman. And we went in there 
five minutes later, I, I stuck my finger into the, the metal stud and there was water actually coming up, not down. So needless to say, we fixed that and that customer is still a customer to this day. Uh, they like to know what's going on. I mean, like, like Emily said, you know, when, when, when before I, well, I, we've always fixed stuff in my home, but I've seen friends and, and family members that would call someone and you're depending on this person. And could you imagine some, I don't know, Neanderthal coming to your house? Yeah, we can fix that. You know, there's no value there. There's no worth. I'm sorry. Like, like I, I, I'm very passionate about, I don't like the word handyman. Like a handyman changes light bulbs. We're home repairmen. You know, it's, it's kind of like a, a, an old trade that should be brought back. And that's what we do. You know, and I don't disagree with that. Um, I'll tell you this. We've had, uh, we had people on, on our team that have needed things like roof repair, just a roof repair. You can't get anybody to come out and do that from a roofing company. It's like they won't do it anymore. It's not. It's, they want the whole roof. Yeah, they're like, no, I want the whole roof for nothing because that's where we're going to make our money. I'm like, well, okay, but like, guess what? When I need a new roof, guess who I was going to call, but not going exactly. to call anymore. <laughs> you know, it's that long term. It's that long term thinking about the customer and, and the entire life cycle, what they could be. It could be, you know, I need I, my roof is 10 years old now, but in five years, I may need a new roof. Um, so because you came and repaired it now, you just earned business then and you still made money, right? Well, so even, so even that phone call, right, I have this issue. And even if we're busy, even if um, it's just not something that makes sense for them to pay us and for us to even go out or have an employee go out. Um, that's, that's still a lead. That's a future lead. That's a possible source of referrals. So we still nurture that relationship. We say, look, it doesn't really make sense, but here's some things you can do or FaceTime them. FaceTime them. I'll show them how to fix it, it for free. And then just walk them through. But then we make sure that you know, we do put into their minds, hey, for future calls, you know, still give us a call. And then we give the ask. Hey, look, we're more than happy to help you. But could you do me a favor? If you hear of anybody that needs our services, could you give them our number? And you'd be surprised how many times they actually do it. Well, yeah, we had, um, we had Chelsea Craig on. She uh, runs Rhino Reviews. And she was talking, you know, she really coaches her clients on the review part. And one of the hardest things to do is just ask for it. Um, and like you guys said, you'd be surprised when you just ask for it, how many people come in. Yeah, it's true. I agree. Um, so we, you know, you guys dove into a little bit of your process in terms of what you guys do on the front end, which the transparency part is just the, I don't know if it's a confidence thing with, with most contractors or, or what it is. And I think just being transparent with the homeowner from the beginning, but I feel like you have to have a process to do that, right? You have to sit there and structure out your thoughts of how you go out and do an estimate uh, when you're doing that stuff. So I know you talked a little bit about the, the estimate side of things. So kind of break down a little bit more. What's your process when you go out and do provide an estimate for whatever job it may be? It could be the, the two doors that I need that are ripped off my uh, pantry right now because my boys hang on them like monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> we gave up. We put a curtain there. They dropped the curtain rod down. And then um, so we, there's no doors until they get older and stop hanging on our stuff. But anyways, sorry. Uh, uh, so talk about that. So if you're coming out to do an estimate, doesn't matter what the job is, but like what's that process look like for you guys? So you're communicating uh, with a transparent in mind and something that, that other contractors could take in the same type of process. Well, first I want to say our whole process that we've developed has come from anytime a situation has been I'm going to say uncomfortable. I'm not going to say we've had, you know, bad experiences. We've had uncomfortable experiences. And the reason I say that is we look at that experience and we go, okay, on our side, where did we drop the ball? Um, because if we're not meeting our numbers with the amount of um, estimates to closings that we're getting, if we're having issues with customers down the road, then there's either a wording in our contract, there's an issue in our process. And so we look at that and we reevaluate and we see, okay, where can we, uh, what do we need to fix? Um, so we go out, I mentioned, we, we hand up the customer our card, we introduce ourselves. I'm going to actually hand this over to Frankie because this is his like baby and I don't want to take it from him. <laughs> okay. So basically my process is, is the phone call comes in the customer says, uh, you know, um, what's a good one to do? Uh, I don't know, drywall repair, I guess. Oh, I got, no, no. No, okay. Drywall. So the customer <laughs> says, uh, oh, my my faucet won't turn on my shower um, handle, you know, faucet handle won't turn on the mixer valve in other words. So uh, first, you know, that's, I mean, to me, like, you know, but we're going to go through our steps. 
So I would say, okay, no problem. Get their information, tell them the time I'd be there. And I'd be there 10 minutes early, always, unless I'm hitting traffic or something. But another key to it is don't go on those times. Don't go at nine in the morning. Don't go five at night, always before traffic. This way you smooth sail and you get right to the house. Nobody wants to wait. I don't want to wait. I have a problem waiting in restaurants for my food. I want it now. You know, so um, so I get there and then I introduce myself. I give the customer the card. Um, I don't talk about none of the work right then and there. I ask them how they're doing, um, compliment something in their house, something that, you know, cr creates some sort of bond. And most of the time I see like a picture of Elvis or, you know, something musical or, or you know, any art, anything. So that's how you do it. And you, you get to know each other first because that's an, that's an interview in my eyes. You know, they might not want to hire me just as well as I don't want to work with them. It works both ways. And I'm, I'm at that point, we're at that point in business where I've let customers go because I didn't like the, the rapport we had. You know, if a customer standoffish don't want to answer me, I try to, you know, prod them a little bit. But if they don't want to talk, if they're very like, oh, just, just get it done. You or know, I might they, not want that job. Or if they've shared that they've had issue after issue after issue with well, multiple contractors, well, they're kind of the common denominator there. So exactly. is that most of the time it is true. Yeah. I mean, but but we're gonna go say this is a good customer, right. a, a, a kind customer, <laughs> and we'll say that you know we go. So then they'll tell me the problem. Now, once again, here comes the where we talked about the the value of it. So or the worth, I should say. Um, so I get there. The customer's like, yeah, I'm trying to turn it on. It's not working. It's not working. All right, step aside. Now, for me, first of all, do, do we have water pressure? Oh, yeah, it's in the sink. It's in the, the toilet, but just not here. So I already step one was making sure we have water. Step two would be is what are we looking for? So by the time I'm done, I already know from experience that most of the time those handles, there's a piece underneath that gets offset. And now you think it's off, but it's not. It, 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 won't, it won't turn that far no more. So it needs to be adjusted. It's something so simple, it takes 10 minutes. By this time, I'm telling the customer, okay, uh, this is the process and, and they're straight up, they know what I'm talking about now. You could do this, I can do this right now. And I give them my price. There's nothing hidden. There's nothing that's like, oh, well, uh, the pipe needs to be moved, nothing. This is straight. That, and then they say, all right, well, let's do it. And then I start my job and then they come back five minutes. Hey, do you know why this door don't shut right? Most of the time, if, if I come in for something so small, I'm leaving with more work. And it might not be that day because maybe the customer is not ready or you know, they have something to do. They make an appointment and we send you know, someone else out, one of our other guys. Or I come back myself. But the point is to constantly, it's like bringing HGTV to you. And we always tell our customers, this ain't HGTV. It doesn't happen in 30 minutes. But in other words, you should know everything that we're doing we're not, we're not hiding. A lot of times, uh, some jobs get expensive and we like to give options. That's another value that we do. Same thing. This all happens in the, the interview process, the estimate process, because I'm not going to hear later that, oh, you didn't tell me. No, I've never heard a customer tell me that. If they did, it's because they're full of crap. Because I've always, even in my paperwork, we've yeah. learned over this time that you have to do everything in writing, everything. It's, it's like a contract like a law contract, you have to be on point. And if we're wrong, then we eat it. I've been to plenty of customers' houses. I fix things for free because I, I, you know, I'm standing there and it's like, oh, this is a loose hinge. So real quick, I don't charge. Well, even we've had customers where, you know, we'll, we'll, let's say it's a tiling job. So we'll take the measurements, take the photos, we write it up with pictures. And, and everything's in there, right? Our whole process, our expectations. Okay, we're, we take a half, you know, half up deposit, half on completion. Okay, um, we're doing the work and we just had a customer actually do this to us recently. And she goes, oh, okay. And then can also, can you paint my whole house and do the base course and just add it on? And our answer, our standard answer is no, let's finish out this ticket, write up a new estimate because we want to make sure that the customer goes into it knowing the price and doesn't have sticker shock and go, oh my God, I didn't know this. Well, you added on the work. There wasn't that discussion. That's not their fault. That's ours. So we're very um, strict about, no, we're, we're finishing up this ticket and then let's revisit that. You know, I mean, we'll give them an estimate in the meantime, we'll get it, you know, set and scheduled, mm -hmm. um, but we're not going to just jump on work because, oh, we're excited about a paycheck, you know? We don't need the money that bad. 
and we're not going to set ourselves up for issues down the road. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think that's hard from anybody. If anybody's starting out in any contracting industry, like, you, you know, you got to pay the bills. So the work is needed, but it's hard to, no, I guess it's hard to make that transition where somebody does add on work and you're like, oh, you're so excited. Um, but to be able to pull yourself back and go, you know what, five years from now, it'll benefit me more if I take the time and and separate these jobs and and be upfront about you know, what the costs are to paint a house and do that stuff. Um, you know, and I think that's huge. And I, you guys showing that the fact that in, of course, business is, is a journey. It's not, there's no, it's not a finite end. Uh, Simon Sinek talks about all the time, you know, it, it's an infinite game. And if you're not playing the infinite game, you're going to lose in business. Um, so no, I agree. Um, it's perfect. So let's get into with, let's get into the margin side of things, estimating projects and margins. Cause I, I'll tell you this in Facebook groups all the time, uh, in the contract space, I hear a lot of people go, how do you guys, how do you guys do your estimates to provide enough margin in there to, to be profitable? Right. Um, and of course, when you are adding those margins in, you have to add value in order to justify the pricing. So how do you guys factor in your margins to stay profitable and continue to win jobs? Well, I, I will say upfront, um, and our customers know this, we are not the cheapest guy. Um, but we're also very upfront with, you know, we are insured, we carry enough insurance, uh, actually more insurance than most general contractors in our state, um, mm -hmm. and that we stand behind our work. So those two things right there, a lot of times, and when you've already built the trust, you've already built the relationship, people are willing to pay um, to have that ease of mind. So when we give an estimate, sometimes if we're really busy, we might be on a little bit of the higher side, mostly because we just were, we're kind of pushing the can down the road. You know what I mean? Like maybe they can't do it this month, maybe next month, but also we can't really schedule them right now. Um, we're very transparent with people about that. You know, we'll say, Hey, you know, we might not be able to get to you for even three weeks. And we've had people say, I'll wait, you know, I'm willing to wait on this. Once they see the process of how like us or our guys go in, it's, it's <laughs> night and day difference. Yeah. Like, um, you know, you call Joe the handyman he's not putting plastic he's not putting drop cloths through your house he's not he's not treating it like his own house he's treating it like it's a job and this ain't a job because right. we have a good time you know? but we'll also um you know we'll do some things we'll do hourly um if it doesn't make sense for us or the customer let's say there's something that there's a dry time on there well i'm not going to charge a guy hourly to have our guy stand there and stare at the wall okay. so then we'll do a flat rate um when we're building in those numbers, we take a look at what does that day cost us as far as our guys. Um, we've broken down our insurance costs per day, um, maybe some of our marketing uh, that we're doing, maybe that month, kind of break it down. So we know what that coverage looks like. And then, um, of course, we add a little profit to make ourselves, you know, be able to eat at the end of the day. So well, I, mean, I, I charge based on experience. I don't charge yeah. based on the job. Yeah. You know, I can do something in 10 minutes. It might take you three hours. Doesn't make my value any less, you know? Um, you know, I've heard guys say it took them an hour and a half to change a faucet. It takes me 10 minutes, you know? And how do I justify it is because when you see that I, 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 I basically, I change the faucet. I explain everything to the point where you, you, you know, you can trust me. I'm trustworthy. You know, I, I've even told people, look, these little shutoff valves, they're, they're, they're kind of old. You don't have to change them now. I'm not, it's not like I'm a car mechanic. Oh my God, you need brakes now because you went for a tire change. You know? Like yeah, we don't do that, you know, unless it is bad. If it's leaking, I'll show you. We even, we have homeowners and, and um, landlords that live out of state. We take videos, we pictures, and I'll show them, look, it's dripping every minute. You know, you might want to get this changed. So they can't say that he didn't tell me that everything's on the table. It's like being a card player. You want all your cards on the table. And to me, I mean, that's the difference. That's the difference that makes uh, anybody, any business, any company, you know, like when I go to Walmart, if, or, or well, let's, let's go back in our trade. If I go to Home Depot near us, they treat me like they don't know me. And I spend thousands of dollars a week there. I go to Lowe's. Hey, Emily, Frank, or even my guys, they know all of us. You want a coffee? You want a water? You know, that's how you want to be treated. And that's how we treat our customers. But also for the, the, es the estimate side, um, we've had people, so this actually happened a couple of weeks ago. This guy said, oh, you're crazy because <laughs> of our price. And so he said I was high or something. Yeah, he said, yeah. And so Frankie says, you know, well, 
Um, no need to be rude. This is my price. Like you called me, I didn't call you. But then you also told them, well, and then this well, is what you're getting for. This is what we're doing. We're gonna, you know, fix the grout. We're gonna make this look beautiful. We're gonna paint the ceiling, scrape it, uh, patch the ceiling. We're gonna paint it. And I said, I heard that you're, uh, you wanted to put a new exhaust fan in the bathroom. My God, I'll just throw it in for you. Just, just have it ready. Yeah, we, we were planning on doing that already. You know, he kind of like built in this, yeah, this value. I was just busy. We, we were getting, we were getting married, going on our honeymoon right after. And, and like, this guy's like giving me the business. And I told him, I'm like, there's no need to be rude. Just talk to me. I might, my, you might not like my price, but that's your problem, not mine. You know, I haven't been rude. And the guy after, he says, when do we start? Yeah. <laughs> that's, because yeah. honestly, if you get to know me, if my, my customers get to know me, they love me. I mean, I, I get offered food, coffee, sit down, talk with them. I mean, imagine a guy's supposed to be working in your house. They want to spend time with me. And I tell them, I can't right now. I can't. I got to work. I got to get out of here. And they just keep coming back. I mean, but it's also because we're like friends. I, yeah. One of our customers were like, we see them in, uh, in Walmart. Hey, what's up? Da, da, da. You got to come by the house. I need this done. Like, it, it's kind of like I got to walk like this. I can hide so they don't see me. But it's also like when, so when somebody calls, the, the way they, they transition into that, that relationship is um, they call, let's say they make an appointment. They're not, they don't just have the office number. It's not like, oh, you get the boss's cell when something's bad. It's like, yeah. no, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to get ahead. I'm going to text you our cell phone number. So if you think of anything else or you have questions and, and people love that. Like you get that late night text. What do you think of this, this faucet set or this one? And I'll be like, oh, I like the first and the second one I wouldn't go with. And, and we just answer like, yeah. You know, this isn't a, a nine to five business. I mean, I get done work a lot of times, 11, 30, 12 at night. You know, yeah. I, I miss a lot of stuff I'm supposed to enjoy, but I also enjoy my job. You yeah. know, I, I'm not the best partner in the world. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. And it's funny. Y'all said one thing in there that I think people miss, um, documentation. Like documenting your work with pictures and videos. Um, literally did a, a podcast with, um, or just recorded one with uh, Max Rosenblum, and he does. Uh, he's a um, uh, estimation uh, supplement expert. So they talk about documenting your work. So even if if you're not doing it for insurance purposes, right, to get a claim, but doing it for your own business and your own self, and 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 taking advantage of softwares out there that can help you organize that. I think that's key. And you guys talked about it because in that way, there's there's complete transparency, and also they can't come back on you and say. You didn't tell us. <laughs> hey, in the beginning of, we, I just started my business. So I had me and a helper. We went to go fix a baseboard and drywall, mm -hmm. right? This guy says, uh, and we, at this point, you take before pictures, during pictures, after pictures. So I'm only laughing because it's funny how it worked out, which is exactly what you're talking about. So the guy says to me, pulls me aside right before it was time to pay. And he goes, listen, I, your, your, your helper cracked my tile on the floor. And I looked at him and I said, oh, really? He did? Where? So he shows me right here. He's cracked it right here. And I said, yeah. I pulled up my phone. This is the best weapon in the world. And I said, look at the picture. The crack's there already from before we even touched him. And he goes, are you sure? I think he dropped a hammer. I said, we don't know. We have picture proof. He couldn't beat me on that. Even in a court, he couldn't beat me on that. So I told him, I said, so I don't know which road you're trying to go down, but you know, we did our job and I expect pain. Well, and that's part of, you know, and, and limiting pictures prove everything. Yeah. Print, pictures and documentation. Um, and it's, it's even, you know, you could have the best, you could have the a job go really smoothly, have the best customer ever. Um, it's still communicating expectations at the end, which is, Hey, if there's any issues, go ahead and give us a call. Um, there is wording in our, our paperwork. Um, Cause yeah, we could take photos and we've taken videos. And then we had a, a, one customer a few months back, she um, got some flooring installed and she tried to say that uh, the toilet leaked underneath the flooring and she had a plumber come out and a flooring guy. And now she wanted us to cover those costs and never called us, but once. never called us. And we said, you know, part of, of the wording in there that you'll notice is you have to call us and have us out there. If we can't put eyes on the problem and diagnose it, make sure that's something we did wrong then we can't necessarily do anything about it because now we're, you know, it's are just we taking someone's word for it? Yeah. And are we fixing the plumber that came that maybe screwed it up after we were there? Are we fixing the flooring guy that, you know, so. Or is it just part of a scam? You know, 
you yeah. let's face it you have shady contractors and you have shady customers there nowadays it's like a drug deal it's, everybody's like oh, do you have do you have a deal and then everybody's so shocked that's why we're trying to bring back that that old feel of like you know a, a mom can call and say hey the the, the the drawers broke we'll come and fix it she's happy the kids are happy the, the technician's happy and we're all moving about forward you know it's not no longer like a guy comes in he's like with the prima donna attitude like oh i don't have to explain myself yes you do yes yeah. you do yeah. no i agree i agree and i think that's uh, i think that's slowly coming back well at least i'll say this the businesses that are thriving that's in there the ones that aren't that's where that's where they're they're failing so well, as we were wrapping up the 30 minute mark here, uh, or getting around there, I, I'm going to ask you guys one more question. Um, so as far as kind of the future of the contracting industry or construction, uh, especially like on the home services side, you're de dealing with residential. Um, what do you think the industry needs as far as moving forward and providing value to customers? Um, I think both of us have our thoughts on that. So we're, we're kind of the industries at a crossroads. Um, if, if we don't do anything shortly, it's going to be a dying field um, because we are actively constantly um, trying to recruit people to our company. Um, we do have high standards. So if somebody says, hey, I got 30 years um, of experience, there's certain things that we have an expectation that they know, um, especially if they want top dollar when they're walking in the door and they don't want to do the working interview. Side note, the reason I say that um, is that there definitely has to be some sort of um, standardized um, education of some sort uh, or something where um, technicians can come into us and show us, hey, this is my knowledge base, this is what I know, and then we can work off that. Um, something to show homeowners, hey, I'm not just the guy with a truck and some tools. Um, so whatever that ends up looking like, I definitely think there's, there's a need and and I, I can't see this industry surviving um, much longer without something in place to show that. Um, only because if you look at every other field out there, um, doctor's assistants have, have now implemented this. This wasn't a thing, you know, 15 years ago. Um, realtors have, a, have, you know, certain extra classes they can do and whatever. Um, so I think the future of our industry is um, kind of hinging on what that looks like personally yep. that's a personal opinion Take better education yeah. better education um, yeah and we had that conversation off off phone it's um you know having uh, there's community colleges out there right that, that do this stuff in technical colleges but at the end of the day the businesses that are thriving the ones that are actually setting up training programs and just paying people and bringing in the right people like i they're, they're having to take ownership of that part because it's missing across the entire industry. And I think those are the ones that are doing it. We had um, Chad Peterman on uh, of Peterman HVAC, um, large HVAC company up in Indiana, and they built tech Peterman Tech Academy because they're like, we, we can't like we can't find the right the right people to do the right jobs. So we're going to train them the right way. Um, and so I agree with you. I think there's got to be a standardization in the industry across the country, not just a state, right? It's got to be across the country. So uh, Frank, sorry, man, <laughs> go ahead. Sure, that's basically, it's something that governs us. I mean, because at the end of the day, I mean, you know, anybody can just fix something, but why? What's, what's going to happen uh, a year up the road? You know, like, like most mechanics today, I, like with my truck, I take it, they're, they're glorified part changers. It ain't, it, it, they're not like, oh, this, I mean, they're out there, don't get me wrong, just like us, but um, they, they don't tell you why, or, or what if, 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 if I don't do it now, how, what, what would that look like? Like, you need to know everything, and there's a lot of times, and this is what I'm going to end it on, this is why I'm different than the rest. You give me any simple job, I'm going to educate myself on it, I'm going to watch videos on, I already know how to do it. I want to see other ways. I want to know other people's thoughts. I want to know why this does this. Ever since I was a kid, I took things apart. I wanted to know how it works. So at the end of the day, I educate myself. So when I come to that customer's house for the estimate, I'm already got an arsenal behind me. And I know exactly what I'm going to do. And I know exactly how I'm going to handle it. And if anything happens, I know exactly how to back myself up to make sure I'm successful. And the customer's house is perfect, immaculate and the projects are done right. 
And this way, my customers know. I mean, that's basically why I believe that, you know, we should have a governing source with us. You know, electricians, plumbers, AC guys, they all have a governing source. So do we. We should have it too. Like, in other words, this isn't a, a, like she said, a guy with a truck. Anyone could do that. Half of the time they come out with their, their tools. And I could already tell that you, you are not a professional. You didn't invest in yourself. You know, anyone could swing like, you know, Ryobi tools. They're not professional tools. So when we get guys to come in with those, I'm good. I don't need you. Yeah. Unless you're willing to upgrade your life. In yeah. other words, do better. That's why we need to be held like a doctor is held to a standard. A lawyer's held to a standard. There's no difference than us. You know, barbers used to wear ties to work. Now they just wear whatever they want. And we'll get guys. I mean, we've had, we had a young kid. He was in his 20s um, mm -hmm. when he came to work with us. And we trained him in and out. He really wanted to go to a, a electric school. He did that. We kept in touch. And at the end, he goes, hey, I'm getting ready to graduate. Can you introduce me to some people? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because we want, we want people that are hungry, that are, are excited about the field. So maybe, maybe they come to work with us as, you know, home repair tech, but that's what we like to call them, by the way, not, not handy man. Um, and they go, you know what? I don't really like hanging fans. I'm not big into tile. Oh, but I love painting. Okay, great. Let me, let me do some intros with you. Let me introduce you around and see if we can get you something because, you know, it's, it's, it's having that connections in the industry too, because maybe a guy's not a good fit, uh, because of where he lives. But if, if, you know, there was a business in West Palm and I know somebody, Hey, that you're looking for, you know, this guy with this personality, let me do the intros. And it, you know, we want to push up Pete. Like that's the whole point. Like these guys with businesses, contracting companies, all this stuff, they want to keep it to themselves. Our job isn't to get a worker and keep them. Our job is to get a worker, make him better. So he could go on his own and train someone else and train and pay it forward. That's the whole, I mean, I'm 42. I mean, I can't do this forever. You know, when you, I mean, could you imagine? I mean, there's guys out there working 60, 70 years old, but they're, they're not doing the right job. They should be educated. They should be teaching the next generation how to do this. That's why, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, I, I believe in my heart, I'm going to be successful, whatever I do, because I'm passionate and I'm not going to do something I don't like. And with home repair, it's almost like, uh, it's like a second nature. You know, I was my, my father, my grandfather, my great grandfather, I mean, that's what we do, you know, and uh, that's why I do want to see more and more of an importance for us. You know, we're not just hammer swingers. We're not just light bulb changers. You know, they exist. It's called like maintenance workers, you know? but we're home repairmen, home repair peoples. Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. Uh, if well, let me as we close out here. So I know when you guys have a lot of experience, are you open to uh, anybody that may that's maybe in the right path that needs help reaching out to you at all? Of course, absolutely. Cool. So how what's the best way for them to kind of get in touch with you? Uh, the business. Or actually, I'll tell you what. They can call my personal phone number. Okay, cool. Well, I'll have them. What we'll do is we'll put um, we'll put all the show notes in there, and we'll put the, your information down there. So if anybody is starting out in the contracting space, wants to learn more, or even just trying to get the business development side set up, um, they've got the experience. Um, yeah, we'll put them down there for them to reach out to you. Cool. Well, <laughs> thank you guys again so much. I think this is a part of the industry in construction and, and contracting that a lot of people don't talk about, um, and and they should, like you said the importance of being able to have somebody come out and make the repairs that, that other people, you know, the bigger companies don't want to because they feel like the money's not there. Um, and I think that's important. So I appreciate you again, uh, both of y'all, Frank uh, and Emily for coming on today. Uh, thank you so much again. And uh, hopefully uh, maybe sometime soon down the road, we'll get you back on. We'd love thank to. You. Awesome. Thank you. Well, th thank you guys again for listening to the Preferred Contractors podcast. If you haven't already, jump into our Preferred Contractors community on Facebook. Uh, if you go on Facebook, search in the groups, Preferred Contractors should be the first one that pops up. We've got everything in there you need as far as marketing, business development, sales, branding, you name it. Anything that's going to help give you actionable steps is going to grow your contracting business. Thank you guys again for listening. Till next time.